Alright guys, so this will be a fun lesson. Today we're going to go over how to draw and sketch in Photoshop. Okay, so right now I'm looking at DeviantArt.com and this is a, uh, an art artist that I'm a big fan of. This is Scotty Young or Cheeks74 on DeviantArt. So I'm going to do, I'm basically going to use this as some reference and then I'm going to do a little sketch. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click for a PC, you would press print screen. And what that does is that captures the screen. Then I go to Photoshop file new and control V as you can see that captures the screen okay and then what I can do is I can just grab this little square because I don't really need everything else control C control V and what that does is that duplicated that square I'm going to delete the rest I'm also going to delete the uh, well I guess we'll leave the background layer in this one well no you know what let's, let's not to go bad habits. So delete your background layer and make a layer new fill layer. And the reason why I always do this is because this thing is infinite, whereas that background layer, it's limited. So if you were to make your canvas size bigger, then you would see this big square in the middle and you'd have to go back and then refill the rest of the background. Whereas this thing is automatic. Okay, so we're gonna do a vector background. And when I draw and sketch, I like to use I don't like to use pure white. Okay, it's not good for your eyes and it's if you draw with white, you won't be able to see it. Okay, so let's do a light gray. We'll put that underneath our reference art. We'll actually name our reference art. And I'll drag that to the middle. And I'm also going to make a copy of that, a small copy, like a thumbnail version. Reference art, small, or you can put thumb for thumbnail. Thumbnail is basically a small piece of artwork, okay? Control T, I'm going to make that small and drag that up into the top left corner. I should make it a little bigger. Hit enter. And I'll chop off the sides of that. So I'm going to make my big one invisible. And then take this small one. And we're going to cut it down a little. So I'm just going to delete. So all I want is that main part there. Okay? Move that up to your top left. Okay, so I've got this guy up here. And then I've got this one here. Okay, so it's all just reference. So I'm going to put both of those in a folder called ref. So for me, I like to work very organized. Name every layer, name every folder, keep everything in folders. And that way I can find myself. I don't get lost real easily. Okay. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get out our brush tool. So I'm going to go over some brush stuff. Make sure this is on normal at first. Okay. Size of your brush is right here. All right, you can see it here. Um, I'm going to have to hit new layer button or layer new layer or actually what I like to do is control shift in and we're going to name this uh, sketch layer it's got a sketch layer other good thing about having your background be a is being a, a vector like this is I can't it will not allow me to draw on it which is what good I don't want to draw on my background I want to draw on my sketch layer so it helps me to be on the right layer and for my reference layer, I'm going to hit this lock button so that way I don't accidentally draw my reference and I cannot accidentally draw my background so I can really only draw on my sketch layer, which is great. Okay. Uh, for your brushes, probably you'll have some circle brushes, so let's go ahead and get those out. Okay, something like this. Okay, we've got a lot to review here because there's a lot of options for your brushes, which is good because you get a lot of options. Okay, so a lot of features. First things first, change mode to normal you got your size and then depending on what kind of brush you have typically you will have hardness yeah so here's a normal brush okay so I want that a little smaller and hardness right if you want a really soft brush like an airbrush right soft edges then you want hardness 0% if you want hard edges then turn hardness all the way up Okay, so I want hardness to be all the way up. Um, what else do we need? Opacity. And, of course, you have your flow. I'm going to change this to black and white. I want black. I just want a black brush. Okay, so I can see what I'm doing. Again, soft. It would look like this. This button right here, very important. This is whether or not you want there to be any variability in pen pressure 
Okay, so it starts small and then gets really big and small again, depending on my Wacom tablet. So today's lesson is really about how to use the Wacom tablet in Photoshop. Okay, so I got my sketch layer on. I've got my usually I keep this uh, on because I do like to have pen pressure with my brushes. And of course, I can right click on my pen and I can get these options so I can turn my size up. All right, I can make it really big or I can make it really small. I like to have a fairly big brush and fairly hard. And then we have both opacity and flow. Okay. Both are at 100% right now, which is probably good for you. But in the in the future, if you want more of like a pencil, because right now I have like a really thick marker, right? Maybe I don't want that. Maybe what I want is to have a pencil, okay? Well, I can turn my opacity down really low, let's say 15%, and that gives me more of a pencil, right? And the cool thing about this is I can build it up on top of itself, right? So every time that I do it, it gets more and more opaque, and eventually it'll get to black, right? Which is kind of nice. Only problem with opacity is I have to stop drawing and then start drawing again for it to get darker. Okay? That's the difference between opacity and flow. Flow, let's say I turn this down to 15%. Now when I draw, if I keep going back and forth, it's like a pencil. If you keep going back and forth, it gets darker and darker. Okay? Opacity does not get darker if you keep going back and forth. You have to stop, start again, then it gets darker. Flow keeps getting darker and darker, even if I don't stop. So I use flow. I don't like to use opacity. Okay, so we got that down. And what I like to do is I like to make my own shape. So I will grab a circle. I like to make it kind of wide, like that. Actually, we'll make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to um, edit, fill. Okay, that didn't work. I'm just going to hit Alt Enter or Alt Backspace. Alt Backspace takes your foreground color and it fills it with that foreground color. Okay, so I've got this black selected as a circle. You can see it if I zoom in. I'm going to go to Edit, Define Brush, Define Brush Preset. I'm going to call that a wide brush. Okay, so now if I press Backspace, I delete that. Control D to undo to deselect. I can press the I can go down to my eraser, I can erase what I've done so far. Press the B button to go back to my brush, or I can click on the brush over here. And so now I can draw to my heart's content. Right? And the cool thing is now I can go to my brushes, my brushes over here, and if I go to the last one. Oh, it didn't show up. I don't know where where's my uh What's in there somewhere, I guess. I'm not sure which one it is. Well, I guess if we go to, so if I click on this over here, it'll give me some options. Oh, here it is. Brush presets. Click on brush presets. Go down to the bottom. And here's my new, br my new brush I just created. So I created a brush that has a kind of a, a wide thing, right? Cool thing about this, I can change the angle a little bit. And this gives me, and I'm going to make it a little smaller, and what this gives me is kind of like a calligraphy pen to draw with. Okay, so I really like to do that. That's what I, that's that's what I usually do. So I do this, and if I turn the flow down really low, right, 15%, see, so actually, when you get down to like say 8% flow, and you'll have what very closely mimics a pencil. Okay, especially if you make it small. So now I've got my pencil. I'm on the sketch layer, and I'm going to just basically rough out this guy. Okay, so. Basically, I want to draw like this. Okay. So here's his head. Here's his body. Here's his here's his bottom leg. Here's his top leg. Here's his arms. Here's one of his hands. Here's his other. Here's his thumb. Here's his top fingers. Bottom of his hand. You got his elbow. You got his face, get his eyes, his nose, his mouth, his hair, 
hair cuts across his eyes. And he's got a little bit of a hair over here. Okay. Got his body, his belt, his shoe. knee. And the bottom of his leg, or the knee, and the back of his leg. And the top of his foot. Oh, and then his chest. Uh, his pupil. This other strand of hair. Oh, and you know what? Let me click the V button. I'll bring. Actually, I'm going to make the whole thing a little smaller. Because I got to fit, make room for that pig. So I hit the Enter button, move him back down a little bit to the bottom. Hit the B button, and now I can finish out the rest of this shape. So I've got this big form on top. So I'm going to draw his, his head like this. His snout, his eye, mouth, and then of course his ears, and the rest of his body. And then the guy's his lynx hat comes over behind. Okay, and then I can kind of give some details on his fingers. So you guys might have to change your lighting a little bit so you can see my light sketch here, but I'm pretty happy with most of these lines. So I'm going to go ahead and darken these lines so that you guys can see them a little better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Image, Adjust. Uh, I like to use Levels, but you could use Brightness and Contrast, if that makes more sense to you. So I can turn the Contrast up and the Darkness down. Although that did not seem to have an effect. Let me go to Control L. So this is Image, Adjust, Levels. Huh. Okay, well what I can do is I can duplicate this layer. See that? So each time I duplicate it, it gets darker. I can shift select all of them, then go to this drop down right here, and merge layers. See that? Now what I can do is I can go in and I can erase some of the lines that, that are not that helpful. And what I'm doing with my eraser is I got this eraser here, and then I turn my flow down, and I use a very soft, make it very soft, right? because you don't really want a hard eraser, you want to just kind of lightly this is the first one of the first lines I drew, so of course it's not that helpful anymore and then this too is also not a very helpful it was helpful in the beginning but it's not necessary anymore, so I'll go ahead and erase that okay so some other important things to know about drawing with a Wacom tablet, this is very critical, actually I should have put this in the beginning but that's okay now, a lot of times, if you know, like I don't zoom in that much, but sometimes you need to go in and add detail, right? This is not really a detailed illustration, but if it was, I'd want to be able to zoom in and I'd want to be able to move this around, right? Now, of course, you do have these tools right here. This is the hand tool. This, uh, you have your zoom tool, so I can zoom in. I've got my hand tool, so I can click and move it around. But the thing is, I don't want to have to go over here and click all the time. I just want to be able to grab it and zoom in and zoom out you know, as much as I please without ever having to touch the tool tablet. And the way this is, I'm doing this is I am actually using the keys on the keyboard, okay? So I use control space bar and this is a little different for Macintosh but it's pretty close. So if you just experiment a little bit you'll figure out the keys. But basically it's a combination of control and space for zooming in, control space alt or control space apple for zooming out, right, to zoom out zoom in and then spacebar by itself it lets me move it around okay 
Also, I can press the tab button and it gets rid of all the extra stuff, right? And I press the tab button again, it all comes back. So I press the B button to get my brush, press the tab, and now I can draw to my heart's delight. All right, I can go back and erase some of these unnecessary lines. I just want my drawing to make sense, so I'm going to erase some of this. So is that starting to make sense? Now if I press the E button, I can get my eraser out. If I press my B button, then I get my drawing out. So E, erase. Uh, B button. For a drawing. Okay, so I'll let you guys play around with that, and you guys can do a little sketch. So, you know, just go find some artwork you like, drag it in, make it small, and then do a sketch of it, okay? And in the next, uh, the next one, I'll basically go over how to add color, okay? Oh, one more thing I want to add, guys, is, um, let me press the tab key. Uh, if you don't make the mistake that I just made, go make sure you get the right image size. So, for instance, mistake that I, let me see if I made it or not. If I go to image size, yes, I drew this at 72 dpi which means it's only going to look good on screens, it's not going to look good uh, on, or it might not look good in print, right? So whenever you do drawings or paintings or original artwork, try to start with 300, okay? And as you can see, it's a little bit pixelated. Well, it's not too bad, but, because it's just a sketch. But if I'd done a lot of elaborate artwork with textures and stuff, it definitely, it would suffer, okay? So get your image size correct in the beginning. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go over some very important, uh, the difference between image size and canvas size, and basically how to manipulate the, the size of your image, how to manipulate the size of your canvas, and what that means. Image size, of course, this is going to resize my artwork, right? So I just amped it up from 72 dpi to 300 dpi, which gives it a lot more pixels, right? And I think it also adjusts the inches. Now I can constrain or not constrain the proportions. But basically, if I change the height, I want it to automatically change the width, right? That's why it's linked here. So I can unlink, well, I can constrain it or not constrain it. See those links? Um, so that's image size. But sometimes what you want to do is I don't necessarily want to change the size of everything. I just want to add more size to the top. For instance, I ran out of room for the pig earlier, right? Well, I sized down my drawing layer. But if I wanted to, what I could have done is gone to image canvas size. Canvas size allows me to make bigger or smaller the canvas, and I can choose where I want to add or take away. Okay. So if I pivot from the very bottom left, and then I change the height from 12 to 18, well, you can see it just added basically six inches to the top, right? So that's very helpful. Also, very useful to know if I want to say, let's say I want to make this the drawing only of his face, but I don't want to lose that artwork. Well, if I crop it, because this crop tool, I could easily crop this just to his face, right? Uh, let me delete these presettings. So delete this, and then, of course, I would want that to stay 300. Well, just delete it. Okay, so I cleared all that out. Now, I could easily crop it, right? And hit crop. Now, it works, but the problem is I just lost the rest of my drawing. You see that? It cut it all off. Well, instead of that, why don't we do image canvas size? And this is near the center, so I'm just going to, let's say I want to get it down to about 5 inches to 5 inches. And we'll cut down to this, actually we'll cut down to the bottom left, to the bottom. Okay, and now if I click on my layer and I drag it around, see that? If I move the, if I change the canvas size instead of the image size, then I don't lose my artwork. It just cuts in, okay, but it doesn't cut anything out. Or it doesn't it doesn't basically doesn't remove any information. Okay? So that's good to know. And I guess that's it. Yeah, control shortcuts for those of course are uh, I think it's control alt I. Yeah, that's image size, and then control shift alt no it's no control alt C is for canvas size. Okay? 
So there you go. You guys have fun.